The 2018 Twin Cities Film Fest is continuing. I'm your host, Natasha. We are here on the red carpet. I was supposed to have an interview. I was supposed to have an interview with John Eater. Where is he? Everyone, put your hands together. You know this face. Hi there. So you had a jam-packed day. Very jammed. Very jammed. More like a jelly. More like a jelly. Okay, so it's been a jelly day. Um, now, you were bowling not too long ago? Uh, yeah, we were just came from the lanes. The lanes. And uh, that's what they call the... Uh, the playground over there, um, and uh, we got to play about half a game. So, uh, yeah, show me your skills. Okay. What was it about this film that got you all jazzed? Ooh, I don't know. If jazz is the word I use. I mean, I was like, I mean, the beginning steps. You're like, I mean, it could be great. It could suck. Who knows? But there's a hint of promise, and uh, no, I like the script. That was a great role. I thought um, it'd be fun to do, and not just fun, but challenging. I, was, I don't get to do a lot of, uh, well, I haven't been able to do a lot of dramatic roles. Okay. Uh, and so I'm always looking for those, and I felt like this could be kind of fall right in there. Uh, I related to the character. There's a lot of things I didn't relate to, so I knew that was going to be a challenge to try to find those uh, aspects of the character that I had to kind of explore. Now you're trying to save Winky's world. Right, Winkies World? Yeah, it's not Winkies, it's Winkies. Well, Winkies World, and you do everything in your power, including a drug-induced conversation with Pac-Man? Oh, it's about 50%, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'm getting the, like, is that a, is that a, um, a spoiler? Old description. Old description. Well, is that with the Pac-Man? It's Winky. It's Winky, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, there's a video game, there's some, and there's some medication involved. Okay. There's some hallucination uh, happening, right. or maybe it's just dream hallucination. You gotta go see you gotta it. Gotta watch it. But uh, we get a little trippy sometimes. Okay, that's cool. You gotta see it, right? Yeah. Um, so, what did you learn about yourself in the film? Oh, aren't we all on that quest to find more than <laughs> oneself? Uh, I realized. Well, I mean, I really. I you learned, need a moment. No. Let me just think for a second. Uh, well, it is. You can look at the rejuvenation kind of thing. Every, every Maybe role. Yeah, just think about the, the spot. Right. Every role you do, you learn something about yourself. You learn. Um, in this particular, I, I don't think I would do well with addiction. Uh, I'm not addicted to anything except for good times. So yeah, I'm going to a therapist for that. Um, no, I, you know, uh, I don't know. That's a, that's a, it's a good question. Okay, that's all right. Yeah. Fair answer. Yeah. Uh, any challenges while going through this filming? That unexpected challenges? Um, we, I mean, I think what was fun, but kind of a challenge was. While I, my character is kind of the rock in the film, everybody around him is kind of these crazy characters, and nobody's taking it. He's the only one who really sees the peril and what's going to happen in, in the future that could happen to his bowling out. And it's going down, it's going to be slow. And he's kind of the only one who sees that and really knows what's going to happen. So he's stressing, he's, he's riddled with anxiety. And therefore, he has to kind of carry the drama throughout the story. While everybody else around is kind of these fun-loving characters, they're funny, they, they're lighter. And so in doing that, just as an actor, I was kind of almost missing out a little bit. Like, oh, but at the same time, loving being the straight guy. And you say straight guy, but still, he had his own, he wasn't just the foil for every joke. He really was, he had to be uh, more serious and, and kind of, uh, again, carrying the dramatic storyline in his eyes. And his actions, and so that's a challenge. So, what do you think of Kendall? Twenty-three, bright, brilliant. I mean, what would you say to Kendall? She's over there somewhere. Well, but... uh, I mean, you hang out with her. Long enough. Long enough, right? No, it's, uh, I was very impressed. I was. I had no idea that it was. I didn't know who it was when I, when I read the script. It's just you know written by someone. So I went in, and then we did the audition. I did the audition. And I saw it, I was like, oh, I, I, know. I mean, at the time, I auditioned, I think she was either 19 or 20, so I was like, wow. okay, uh, this is well done. Um, 
I was very impressed. And, uh, and I heard her giving the advice, never never take no for an answer. And I've definitely seen that through her actions. This is someone who has a vision. She knows what she wants. It's very inspiring, especially since I was probably like the oldest guy on set, actor and crew-wise. Uh, and yet, you know, she was inspiring to everybody around her because she was you know, full of energy and just, this is what I want. This is, uh, I have my vision. And she was very collaborative with me. So very, very professional at this age and knew what she was doing. So very inspiring. I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked Kendall because a lot of people look up to you. You're a role model to many people out there. And there's a lot of people that are really wanting to break into this world of acting. What would you, what advice would you give to them? Run? <laughs> Run really? for your life. Unless you truly, truly love it, you know, no, if you truly love it, absolutely pursue anything that you truly love. Uh, acting wise, I don't even know then. Um, it, I love acting and it's so much fun. And um, I don't know about advice, just you know, kind of know, know your strengths, uh, ignore your weaknesses, um, and uh, do your best to listen to your heart. Listen to your heart. Thank you so much. We're going to go and watch the film. Let's go watch the film. Woo! Thank you.